this is knowledge charity module on electrostatics we will be seeing two important concepts today namely principle of superposition and concept of electric field so let's go ahead with the topics first let us see principle of superposition principle of superposition is nothing but to compute the force due to multiple charges on a single charge so principle of superposition has got various applications in various domains but in our topic it is going to be to compute force on a single charge due to multiple other charges consider a system as shown you may you might wonder where it is we will be showing it soon once i finish the explanation the image will come you can analyze it in detail so we will consider a system of three charges q1 q2 and q3 so naturally according to coulomb's law there will be a force of interaction between each of them but we are not bothered about how each of them affect each other but we are bothered about how one is affected by the other two that is what this superposition principle is going to do so as we see here we will have to notice how q1 will be affected due to q2 and q3 next is to do all this we need to know a basic law in physics called the parallelogram law of vector addition if the vectors that we need to add or find the resultant of they are representing the two sides of a parallelogram that means the resultant will be represented by the diagonal so how are we going to compute it we have already studied this in 11th standard i am just giving a review so that the concept doesn't seem to be new who are for whom it is actually seeming to be new so it is computed as the whole root of vector 1 square plus vector 2 square magnitude plus 2 times vector 1 vector 2 cos theta so it's the root of vector 1 square vector 2 square plus 2 times the mag product of the magnitudes of vector 1 into vector 2 the cos theta so that is the net magnitude of the resultant the direction will be along the diagonal so principle of superposition nothing but if the forces are represented as vectors like if q1 will experience multiple forces due to q3 q4 q5 and the forces are f3 f4 f5 the resultant of these three forces on q1 will be the net force that q1 experiences due to the other three charges so we'll be seeing few problems also so you will understand better see the diagram now you have q1 q2 and q3 whose position vectors are r1 r2 and r3 respectively q2 to q1 distance is r1 to direction along q2 to q1 q3 to q1 distance is r13 along r13 unit vector unit vector i will explain that in the forthcoming slides now see you can see a parallelogram being formed where f13 is one side of the parallelogram f12 is another side the resultant is f1 which is the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by f12 and f13 clear with the concept mathematically we will see the expressions f12 plus f13 is the resultant f1 which is nothing but coulomb's law 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r12 the whole square into r12 cap plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q3 into r13 square into r13 cap this addition can be done by the parallelogram the net resultant direction is computed by the parallelogram okay this is for three charges if there are n charges how will you find n charges in the system see there are f13 to f1n so that will be the same it's nothing but q1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 is common in all but the other charge might be q2 or q3 or whatever it is right from 2 to n it is qi okay so q1 r1i 
So whatever it is, R, if it is Q2, it is R12, Q3, R13. So it is R19 the whole square. The unit vector is also R19. This is the expression for a force due to multiple charges. What is this R19 cap? That is a unit vector. Since forces are vectors, you need to have a direction for them. You cannot say in the north direction, the south direction. You cannot say that. So we will attach a direction vector called the unit vector. Their magnitude is unity. So they don't affect the whole formula at all. The direction is along the direction of that parent vector. So it is in the direction of F1. How will you find that? This will be the mathematical formula for that. R21 cap is nothing but vector R21 divided by magnitude of R21. Okay, so vector R21 is comprised of magnitude of R21 and R21 cap. That is how it is defined. But the direction of R21 and R12 are equal. They are equal. Okay. Because the force is the same. Fine. Let us do a sample problem now. See this figure. We got three charges Q1, Q2 and Q3. Q1 is Q. Q2 is Q and Q3 is minus Q. So, what is the force on each of the charges? We have again got parallelogram law here. For Q1, it is due to Q2 and Q3. Q3 is negative, so it is an attractive force. This is a repulsive force. So, the net will be like this. Similarly here, both are attractive. So, the net force will be towards down. Here also it is attractive and repulsive net will be like this. This is how we compute it. Magnitude of F1 equal to magnitude of F2 which is nothing but equal to some say some F. Now magnitude of F3 what is it? Tell me. What is magnitude of F3? Magnitude of F3 acts along the altitude of the triangle, if you notice. Acts along the altitude of the triangle. So we can say that it is root 3 times F. It is nothing but root 3 times F. So now let us go into details. Forces acting on charge Q at A due to all that I have explained. F1 is F into R1 cap, which is R1 along the direction of BC. So the formula is F is equal to Q square by 4 pi epsilon naught into L square. Triangle length is L. So according to Coulomb's law, this is the formula. So total force F2 on charge Q at B is again F, but it is in the direction R2. Okay. Next, similarly, total charge on minus Q is F3. Minus Q is F3 which is nothing but root 3F and the direction N cap is along the direction that bisects BCA which is nothing but on the altitude. So if we see the sum of the three charges results to be 0. I am not explaining how it is going to be. See the Newton's third law is very clear that for every force there will be an equal and opposite force. So, we can, since Newton's law is in line with Coulomb's law, we can conclude that F1 plus F2 plus F3 is 0. So, I will leave this proof to you as an assignment for this module. You can just you know, write the proof in the comments column, whatever, the explanation itself. You need not do it in the formula format. Or if you are doing in the formula format, work out in a paper and scan it or photograph it and Send it to me at nyandan at gmail.com. G-N-A-N-D-H-A-N at gmail.com. Next is the concept of electric field. So electric field exists due to a charge in some distance around it. So while defining the charge itself, we say a charge is an entity that is capable of attracting or repelling entities of similar kind within its electric field. But I didn't want to bring in the 
concept of electric field then so now we will define it every concept or every domain has a concept of field say magnetic field a positive field of energy whatever it is in electrostatic similarly we consider a concept of electric field okay so what we define this field as is if we place a unit charge a charge with magnitude 1 coulomb in the region of attraction of repulsion of another charge it would certainly experience some force according to coulomb's law that force which this unit charge experiences is called as is called as electric field so how will you formally define it electric field due to a charge q at a point can be defined as the force experienced by a unit positive charge when placed at that point okay when i place a unit positive charge at a particular point whatever force that unit positive charge experiences is called as the electric field at that point so we will have to see two more new terms now source charge and the test charge a charge capital q whose field is computed using this electric field definition is called as source charge now you are placing a unit charge no at that point where you want to compute that field that unit charge is called as the test charge mathematically you can see it is f divided by the unit charge q unit charge q is represented by small small q so that unit charge is going to be infinitesimally a small value that is why you use the word limit q tends to 0 f by q so i want the q to be small q to be infinitesimally small so that it is practically a test charge am i clear with what i am saying the unit charge should be infinitesimally small that is why we say that limit q tends to 0 so if that is the case then the formal definition mathematical expression is instead of k q1 q2 by r squared the q2 value is q so we are dividing that so that q will go it's only 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into capital q by r squared into r cap r cap is the direction of electric field